Thank you everyone for this uh, opportunity to share just a few moments on my experience of Germany. I'm the world's biggest cynic. Um, I think St Paul forgot to list cynicism as a gift of the spirit, but it's, it's definitely there. And I haven't got a problem with cynicism as long as it's creative, um, not destructive. And uh, just to give you a bit of a background, I was in an urban parish before I came to this vast multi-parish um, benefice in uh, Much Wenlock, which is between uh, Shrewsbury and Bridge North. So uh, there are 14 uh, churches that I ultimately have pastoral responsibility for in all um, shapes, sizes and tastes. And one of the um, constructive comments that a bishop made is part of the problem, Matthew, is, you know, it all depends on you. You know, what happens when you're not there? And, and there was this whole big push on the fact, you know, leadership qualities, Matthew, you know, never mind all this priestly stuff, you know, it's about leadership. So that made me resist even more because I felt called to be um, a priest, not some leader which is... Um, restrained by what, dare I say, you know, a heck of a lot of peer pressure. Because when you think about this word, um, leader, so often it's all about, you know, bowels and whistles and, and gimmicks. I may have been on the telly, folks, but that's as far as it goes. And I've only mentioned Vicar's Life because Louise told me to. So there we go. I've, I've got it out of the way. Um, but uh, cut into the chase, you would have thought in a, in a diocese like Hereford, there'd be all these wonderful courses on um, multi-parish benefices and, and, and leadership. And, of course, when I took uh, uh, the role as team rector, you know, the bishop was saying, well, we're going to resource you, Matthew, we're going to do this, and we're going to do that, and we're going to do the other. And, and this comes back to expectations, folks, doesn't it? Because, you know, there's two types of people. There's those that want to be spoon-fed and put their thumbs in their mouth and say, well, they don't do anything for me. Um, but we've got to take some responsibility for our for ourselves and our, and, and our own uh, professional um, development. So after this stunned silence from Hereford, when I said after I was appointed, well, so what is there available? And there was this silence. I, I then obviously had connections. It's so lovely to be reacquainted with Rob um, Barker today through our church army connections. It was actually through the church army that I actually got to know the Arthur Rank Centre all those um, years ago, and I saw that the Germinate Leadership um, course was being um, advertised, and, and, I, and I duly signed up, and she's not here today, but the big difference, I think, for me, was sometimes as ministers and as leaders as lay, we can be very cynical about training. You know, you hear the speaker, and immediately, oh, God, George, didn't think much of that, mate. I'm really sorry, but, you know, I could have done a better job. You know what it's like. Um, but I can honestly say that it was Janet, through that telephone conversation, um, first of all, that took the time and the trouble to get to know me, um, be creative in managing my cynicism, um, all those things that actually made me sort of sign up for the course. And then I'd like to say something about Howard, um, because it was actually through that first um, session, if you remember, when you talked about... Um, I've got to look it up now. Um, what was it you said about? It was about um, emotional... Uh, intelligence. Yes. I feel a bit like Dougal in Father Ted. You know, it's a priest thing. You wouldn't understand. Um, uh, um, that really struck a nerve in me, this whole sense of emotional intelligence, about self-awareness, questioning why you do what you do in the way that you do. And, and also, I was very fortunate on the programme, which I think is so very important for all of you that have signed up for this year, and you're thinking to yourself, well, what have I let myself in for? Life is so busy. Have I really got time to do this? I actually saw it as a bit of retreat time as well, just to step away and have an objective view of, of you know, where I am in relation uh, to God and uh, the parish in which I serve. And I was so very unfortunate when it came to uh, work shadowing is... Um, in my um, town of Much Wenlock, the chief executive of Shropshire Council actually lives in the town. I knew he lived there. He doesn't come to church. Um, you know, I do that thing that you do, you know, see him down the street and give him a little wave. Um, but I thought this was a real opportunity for work shadowing to actually get to know someone who's got a significant leadership role. 
in a predominantly rural county like Shropshire, where you're having to you know, do more with less and, and constraints and where you invest the mo- where you put the money, etc., etc., etc. And I had this most wonderful time with Clive Wright, the chief executive of Shropshire Council. And when we think about institutions, I sat in some of these meetings at Shah Hill and I thought it's just like being at Dawson Synod. <laughs> it, 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 there were these sort of parallels, but the wonderful thing about this chief executive, we have this we have this view of a chief executive, don't we, with us? You're looking at your watch. I've nearly finished, I promise you. Um, this, you know, this, this image of a chief executive, you know, posh chair, um, pictures, and all the rest of it. And he was the most humble, humble man I've ever met in my life. He started his... He left school at 16 to be a plumber. And then obviously did uh, FE work and so on and so forth. But he was the most wonderful, wonderful guy. And the one thing I learned from him was him about identifying people's gifts and talents and, and fostering them and, and celebrating them. And I think that is the one thing I really learned from that experience. And he used the expression, which I'd like to share with you, is about defining purpose. And I think that was very, very enlightening uh, for me when I reflect on you know, the priorities in my vast multi-parish benefices with both the challenges and the opportunities. And not that I want to be like Oscar Romero and get shot, um, but Oscar Romero did see these words, which I think are very important for Germinate and indeed for us as rural leaders, because it was Oscar Romero who said, this is what we're about. We plant a seed that will one day grow. We water seeds already planted, knowing that they hold future promise. We lay foundations that will need further development, which includes myself and indeed others, We provide yeast that produces effects far beyond our capabilities. We cannot do everything, and I think this is really important. And there is a sense of liberation in realising that. And this enables us to do something and do it very well. And I've also learned, finally, through Germinate Leadership, um, to hold my nerve when it comes to certain challenges especially when it comes to your leadership style uh, being scrutinised and challenged, which demands that ability to be gracious, uh, to listen, to reflect and adapt if necessary, but also remain true to yourself, not pretending to be somebody um, you're not. I could say more, but I know Louise is tapping her watch, but it's just been a real... Um, privileged to be part of uh, Germinate Leadership. For those who are just about to embark on the course, uh, it will will be a real source of um, blessing to each and every one of you because it's about bringing glory to God. It's about the importance of ongoing ministerial formation and leadership development. And it's just holding to, just finally, to some final words by Oscar Romero, which have been so essential to my journey on Germinate. He says, anything we may do may be incomplete, but it's a beginning, a step along the way, an opportunity for the Lord's grace to enter and to do the rest. We may never see the end results, but that is the difference between the master builder and the worker. We are workers, not master builders, ministers, not messiahs. We are prophets of a future not our own. Thank you.